Good morning there and welcome to another Hope a Daily. I hope you're all okay whether you're watching uh, live or watching back uh, later on. Um, today's Thursday and uh, we are going to be looking at Romans chapter 5 uh, verses 1 through uh, 11. Um, so yeah, whether you're watching um, live with me now or watching back later on, please let me know your thoughts, your comments, your reactions to the passage as we kind of go through it um, and just set aside uh, that that time today, wh wherever you are, whether you're in the car, whether you're in the bathroom watching this, or uh, in the lounge, or whether the kids are running around um, like, like, like bonkers, um, just try and still your heart at, at whatever place you're at, and uh, let's uh, let's do this together. So yeah, I was gonna qu quickly pray, and then we will uh, get to work. So uh, yeah, Jesus, I pray just still our hearts uh, as we come to your word. God, I pray, God, just open our minds. Lord, that you might speak to us through your spirit, through your word. Um, yeah, God, just to motivate us, God, and um, increase our affections towards you, stir our hearts towards you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Great. So, um, after uh, Romans chapter 4, where Paul has been talking about being justified through faith, uh, so like Abraham was justified through faith, he was made righteous through faith, uh, not because of works of the law. Paul then says uh, in chapter 5, uh, verse 1, um, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, like Abraham, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith, into this grace in which we now stand. Paul saying, hey, um, you know, since we've been justified through faith, we now have peace with God. You know, whereas before there was, uh, there was conflict between us and God, sin stood in the way between us and God, but now there is peace um, uh, and because we stand in grace, because, because God has uh, given us a place of grace um, uh, from which to stand and, and now we can stand in that place. Now there's peace between us and God. There's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to be concerned about when we stand before God. There is peace because God, uh, because Jesus has brought, has brought peace. Uh, and it says, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Um, which is a bit of a strange phrase, like rejoicing in the hope. Uh, you know, like we have joy in hope. Uh, you know, normally you'd have one or the other. You'd, have, you'd either be joyful because something good has happened, or you'd be hopeful that um, you know that something good is going to happen. Um, but maybe not both at the same time. Um, and the reason why, keep reading in verse three. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom He has given us. Paul saying, "Hey, even though life looks a little bit bleak, even though you're going through suffering, even though you're going through hardship, you can still rejoice in that moment because suffering produces perseverance. We, we, we persevere through suffering. That perseverance brings about a godly character. That godly character clings on to hope. And so really, our like, times of suffering and hardship increases our hope and our dependence uh, on God is that ultimately we look forward uh, to something great that is coming. And so we can rejoice when we suffer. We can re re rejoice when we're going through hard times. We can re like, rejoice and find happiness happiness in God um, you know, during this pandemic. Why? Because we're looking forward to something great, because we know that something great is coming. We are rejoicing in the hope of God. We are rejoicing in our hope that something good is coming. Um, it's sort of like that feeling that when, you know, when you're busy at work, um, maybe you're busy typing away at work and, uh, and you're kind of smiling to yourself because you know at the end of the day you're going to clock off and you're going on holiday, holiday for a few weeks, uh, a few weeks, a few weeks, that's weird. Um, or, or you know that um, you know next week like you're going on a vacation or whatever, um, and and, you, and you're smiling to yourself because because you're looking forward to something, you have the hope in something, and you're rejoicing because of that. Uh, that thing hasn't come yet, but you're happy just in the hope that that thing is coming. Um, and that's kind of like what the Christian experience is, is that we have such a hope in God that something awesome is coming, all of God's goodness, um, all of God's life is coming, and we rejoice in that hope. Yeah, so it means that we can have a happiness about us, we can have a joy about us, uh, we can have like a rejoicing nature about us, because we, are, we, are, we um, are rejoicing about a hope that we have. Um, about something great that is that is coming. It means that during suffering and perseverance and and hardship, um, you know, it doesn't need to be dark. It doesn't need to be bleak. Uh, we can rejoice in the hope of God. 
And then it says, verse 6, uh, you see, you see, just um, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the unrighteous, for, 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 the, uh, for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. Whilst we're still sinners, Christ died for us. Um, you know, is that, you know, we were like enemies of God. We were, we were still sinners, but even though we were still sinners and lost in our sin, dead in our sin and transgression, Christ died for us. Um, so therefore there is peace, you know, there's nothing to worry about. You know, if Christ died for us when we were still, when we were still sinners, then, um, you know, the, then the deal has been done. You know, there is now peace between us and God. There is only a hope of good things to come. There is not fear of retribu retribution. There is not fear of condemnation. There is not fear of judgment when we stand between us and God because we know that Christ has brought peace. And that is something that we uh, rejoice in and look forward to. Verse 9, since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death um, of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in the God, uh, in God through, our joy, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received uh, reconciliation. So, so we rejoice in the God who... Even though we, even when we were powerless, even when we just had no um, spiritual capital before God, um, when we were dead in our sin and transgression, even when we were enemies of God, He died for us. He expressed mercy to us. He expressed grace to us. Nothing on our part, and that's what we rejoice about. Um, you know, if that if God can do that, then you know, no, 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 nothing else really, no, no, nothing else really matters. Um, you know that we go through times of hardship and um, and struggling, and you know, but all of that seems to vanish away when we place our hope in God and we start to rejoice in that that something awesome is coming. Um, so yeah, so there we are. That's, that's, that's Romans five verses one through um, eleven. Um, so let me know your thoughts and your comments, uh, your uh, reflections on the passage. Um, you know, like, is that is that hope and is that rejoicing like like an active thing in your life? Is that something that you can kind of sense? Like, oh yeah, like I feel like like that. I feel like sometimes I I'm having a bad day, but you know what? I just I put my hope in God and I, and I look forward um, to all that God is going to bring. I look forward uh, to the fullness of life that that God is going to bring uh, through the gospel. Um, you know, when His kingdom comes, when um, or when Christ returns, like, we, we we place our hope in that um, that God is going to bring. Um, all of his fullness all of his life um to us and we have nothing to fear we have nothing to worry about we have nothing to be concerned about um because we are now peace between us and god so it's an awesome thought isn't it so let's pray um and i will then leave you to get on with your day so yeah dear lord we just thank you for your goodness god we thank you for your grace and your mercy god that even when we were powerless God, even, then, even when we were dead in our sin and transgression, even when we were enemies of you, Lord, when, when, when there was no right or reason, Lord, to, uh, to justify us, God, you died for us. God, that you died for your enemies. You died for your, uh, for your offenders, for, your, uh, for those who rebel against you, God. And so now, Lord, we have peace between, um, between us and you. So, God, we just rejoice in the hope of God, we, we rejoice in our hope that we have in you, Lord, because we look forward to, to something great that is coming, God. We, we look forward to your kingdom. We look forward to your presence. Uh, we look forward to God, to all the, all the great and good things, God, that you will bring. We look forward to heaven and earth becoming one again um, and you ruling over all things. So, Jesus, yeah, we just place our hope in you today and we rejoice in that hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Great. Well, have an awesome day, guys. Um, um, someone will be with you tomorrow for the next passage. It might even be me. Uh, and uh, yeah, have an awesome day. Bye-bye.